greetings and welcome to an LGR assembly thing. And today we've got this thing right here. This is the Retro Power Retro Bricks Nintendo Entertainment System style model. Really, it's a case meant for use with Raspberry Pi 2 and 3 computers. I've put together a few of these kinds of Lego models here on LGR, and everybody was always saying, oh man, it'd be so cool if those fit like a Raspberry Pi inside. Well, this one does. In fact, this is only one of several sold by Retro Power on places like Amazon. At the moment, it costs $26 for just the model itself and $36 for this one you're seeing here with two USB NES style controllers. But if you saw my unboxing recently, you'll know that this was actually sent to me from the company. I knew I was interested in these kind of things, having seen my previous videos. So they hooked me up with a few models, no strings attached, you know, I can do whatever I want with them. And what I want to do is put them together. So that's what we're going to do. So throughout this video, we're going to unbox the thing, assemble it, get the Raspberry Pi set up with it, and try out these controllers and see how it all works together. And the first step in the process is cutting the thing open. So let's get to it. All right, so inside it pretty much just looks like a Lego kit, though it's not a Lego kit. In fact, you're not going to see Lego or Nintendo or any brands like that on here because it's not. It is, however, compatible with Lego system parts, and these pretty much look like NES controllers to me. The grayish color of the plastic shell is a little bit off. It's a little more beige than I think it should be. But other than that, I mean, it feels pretty spot on. It does feel a little bit lighter weight, perhaps a little bit cheaper, and I don't doubt that they are. Yeah, I don't expect them to be top notch. However, this instruction booklet is pretty impressive just for the fact that it exists. I've had a bunch of these third-party Lego style kits in the past, and a lot of them don't actually come with a physical instruction booklet like this. Usually it's just a PDF download from their website or something. This one does come with a physical book, and I appreciate that. And honestly, it looks pretty good on first inspection. So, all right, we've got six plastic bags here full of all sorts of lovely looking parts. And it's my standard fare to just undo everything and put it in a big pile and then separate them all out by color and vaguely by size and stuff like that. Just so I can quickly-ish see what I'm doing when I'm going to be going through the instructions step by step. And no, I'm not going to be showing every bit of this assembly process. That would take, well, I don't know, I, don't, I think it took me like 45 minutes to actually do all of this. I'm just going to cut it up this time around. But yeah, altogether, there are 30 steps in the instruction manual. And the first one here really is just putting together the base of the thing, which, uh, you know, it's a Lego kind of project. So yeah, that's typical. And immediately I'm realizing that it is actually going to end up being a little bit larger than I expected it to be. Not that it's a bad thing. <laughs> it's just that all of my other Raspberry Pi 3 cases have been much smaller. Like this is about twice as large as any of my other Pi cases. So, you know, just something I noticed right off the bat. Anyway, once this first part is going, we've got a bunch of these lots of long, thin structural buildup kind of pieces. And really for the first 10 or so steps, that's all we're going to be doing. Yeah, step four is just more structural integrity type of stuff building up quite a bit in the middle, which is good to see. Because again, this is much larger than the actual Raspberry Pi, so I'm assuming a lot of this is just structural. Once I got to step five, though, there's this little bit here that's supposed to mimic the LED, the red power display from the NES and the bottom left there. I thought that was kind of nice. It doesn't actually light up or anything, but you know, it looks the part. Same with the power and reset button that go to the right of that. But then over there in the bottom right of the front of the system, when, you know, when it's all said and done, there were supposed to be these two little black tall pieces here that are going to go in with those little connector bits. That's supposed to mimic where the controllers would go on the real NES. However, two of the black pieces just weren't here at all. I went through and looked through all the footage, you know, double checked, triple checked everything, went through all the bags and boxes and packaging and everything all over again. I spent about five or six minutes looking and nope, they just were not included. And, you know, just got in touch with the manufacturer and said, hey, uh, there's an issue. And they're like, oh, crap, we can send extra parts. Anyway, we'll address that later on. Step six is just flipping a thing around and doing a whole lot more structural stuff. And then in the back rear, <laughs> I like this little touch. I, I just like any of these little touches like this that make it look like the real thing to some degree. And this section right here, this is where the power connector would go, which continues on to step seven. You have the little round cylindrical piece right there that looks like the AV output or, you know, the RF connection. 
continuing on to the next step where the right hand side of the unit you get the little red and yellow for the rca connectors right there i, <laughs> I don't know these little things amuse me like, I loved building the Apple II and the IBM PC for all of the little internal components that you just will never see. You know, expansion cards and microprocessors and stuff. This one, unfortunately, doesn't have anything like that. It really is, again, the main idea is to just hold a Raspberry Pi. So you get a nice flat surface here that we're putting together right in the middle, followed by some more structural stuff to build up the secondary gray, like the lighter gray color that goes on top. And yeah, that's at this point we start getting to some of the flat pieces. And this is where the Raspberry Pi itself is going to sit when all is said and done. Which is smart. I'm glad they didn't end up going with all of the little round bits on top and ended up with completely flat pieces. That way the Raspberry Pi just slides right in and nothing on the bottom of the board is going to stick on anything. But yeah, these next three or four steps, it really is just more of the same. Lots of structural supports and places to snugly fit the Raspberry Pi in the left of the unit there. And if effectively, the Raspberry Pi is going to be going into what would be the cartridge slot of the NES, which I thought was interesting placement. I kind of expected it to be around back so that like, you know, cords would be coming out the proper spot or something. But uh, no, I guess they did it this way because, well, as you can see here, let's just go ahead and get the Raspberry Pi. This is a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B. And yes, this is the same unit that I used for my Building a Better PlayStation Classic video a little while back. The way this just slides into the NES here, we're actually going to be building around it. So you do have to insert it on step 16, about halfway through the build process. Uh, this is uh, why I'm assuming that it's in the cartridge slot position. The USB ports are going to be sticking out the front. But yeah, now that we've got the Raspberry Pi in there, we're just going to be, like I said, building around it and just putting all sorts of long pieces and slats and supports and stuff like that on top of it and around to the front of it. So yeah, once it's in there, it's in there. It's held very tightly. I'm kind of not the biggest fan of this, to be honest, because, well, for one thing, you can't access the SD card. You know, the micro SD is in the back facing the back of this little NES model when everything is done, which means that you will have to slightly disassemble this thing if you ever want to take the Pi out of there or access the SD card. Now, I pretty much never have to do that. I just use USB and Wi-Fi functionality to, you know, do things like transfer ROMs and all that stuff. But yeah, this was just a different design than I anticipated that it would be be when I first was looking at the box art and all that kind of stuff. You know, the cords coming out of the left-hand side of the NES, USB out the front, and no access for the SD card. Anyway, at this point, I mean, we're pretty much done. It's, we're, you know, just speeding through a whole bunch of this nonsense because it really is just more of the same. All the supports are in place. We're just going to be adding some of these little joint hinge pieces here. And this is going to be where the cartridge slot door is going to connect to. And then there's the top of the unit itself, which <laughs> I really like the way that they put this together. Like on the right hand side of the top of the actual NES, you have all of those little vents. Well, they use these little slat pieces, 16 of them, to mimic that aesthetic and <laughs> it looks pretty good. And combined with all of the really flat, smooth pieces, yeah, it's a convincing NES aesthetic. And the last five steps of this assembly project uh, consist of just putting together the actual door itself to go in front of the cartridge slot, or really in this case, in front of the Raspberry Pi. So yeah, it's just a combination of some long pieces, some little L-shaped pieces, and more of those connectors to snap into the hinges on the top front of the unit itself. And once we get that into place, voila, we've got a Lego not Lego NES not NES <laughs> for the Raspberry Pi 3. I guess if you wanted, you could add like actual Nintendo stickers. It doesn't come with those, obviously, but it does come with these retro power decals. If you wanted to add those, I did not. And check it out. <laughs> I think this is a very smart looking little unit. The proportions are a bit exaggerated all the way around, but overall it looks pretty darn neat. Unfortunate though that it was missing those two black pieces that go right there where the controller ports would be on the real thing. Again though, not a big deal. They said they could send me replacement parts, no problem. And I had a couple of extra lying around because who doesn't? In fact, I think these are going to be the actual only official Lego pieces in this entire build. But you know, it blends together just fine and well, there you go. We have a completed Nintendo Entertainment System Lego style case. Yay! Oh, and just for a comparison in terms of size and I guess color and aesthetic and whatnot, here is the official NES Classic, the mini console. 
This is kind of more of the size that I was expecting when I first saw this product. And really a Raspberry Pi could fit in there. It's small enough. So, you know, I guess they really wanted to do extra larger looking features to make it look a little more correct. The functional cartridge slot and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, decisions were made. Well, yeah, let's just go ahead and get this thing plugged up. So we've got HDMI going into the side here. Again, kind of odd placement. We got an official Raspberry Pi power supply to go into the side here as well. And it does leave the AV output on the side there. So if you wanted to hook this up through composite, you can do that. And then, yeah, opening the cartridge slot, so to speak, and you can plug in whatever you really want to. So it has access to Ethernet and the four USB ports right there. So got the controller plugged in and yeah, let's turn the thing on and get it set up. So yeah, as established in my previous video on the Raspberry Pi things, I'm using RetroPie here. There are a lot of options for things like this, but that's what I'm using here. And this is the gamepad configuration, super easy. And of course it plays perfectly fine because it's a Raspberry Pi 3 with good emulation and all that good stuff. The main thing that I really wanted to test out in this section anyway, is the retro power controller, because I know that they've sold a bunch of different controllers on Amazon for some time now. I've seen these pop up in my recommended shopping lists and places on the internet where it's just like, Ooh, you like retro games. You should buy one of these, but I never did. I've never been into getting like clone versions of classic controllers. I just prefer to use the actual classic controller and an adapter or something. But I was surprised. I mean, this one feels pretty darn good. Again, it doesn't feel 100% right. Like the materials are different. It is a little bit lighter weight and like the buttons, they just, I don't know, they don't have exactly the right feel. Like even a slight difference feels bizarre. It's mostly the weight that gets to me. Like the inputs themselves, they're fine. Like I had no problems playing anything. It was just the whole fact that it was a bit lighter weight and as such felt quote unquote cheaper. But you know, considering this entire kit costs 36 bucks and comes with two controllers. So yeah, you know, I can play Mario. I, I can play the new recently <laughs> released SimCity prototype for the NES. Yeah, that's a thing. I was super excited to see that that finally saw the light of day. There's always been talk about it. I've seen screenshots and I remember seeing it in magazines and stuff back in the day. So to actually finally be able to play this is just awesome. Huge thanks to Frank over at the Video Game History Foundation for getting this out there. And uh, yeah, now I can play it on my newly put together NES, not an NES console just a Raspberry Pi in a Lego case. But you know, I don't know, there's something appealing about having a Lego case with a Raspberry Pi. I've had a few of those now. Again, it's a little bit larger than anticipated, but dang it, I guess I'm just charmed by the little details like the fake ports and the moving door on front. You know, it doesn't have to be limited to NES or Famicom or anything like that because it's got a ton of things. You wanna play Sega Master System games on here? Go for it. 8-bit Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is just waiting for you to dive in. I know that this same company sells a Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive version, also a Super Nintendo. And I've seen a ton of companies making these console shaped Lego projects for Raspberry Pi cases. Maybe someone's done a Master System one by now. But anyway, I am absolutely just rambling at this point. <laughs> I am on a lot of caffeine. Right, so that is the retro brick Raspberry Pi case, all 307 bricks worth with the USB controllers, which are actually pretty decent considering how cheap I assume they are. Uh, but yeah, that's it for this episode of LGR. Um, this is not sponsored or anything like that. I was just, I got this thing, it was cool, and I wanted to try a new case on my Raspberry Pi, and yeah, here it is. I don't get anything for recommending it, so, you know, I, I guess I'd kind of recommend it. <laughs> if you want it cool, if not, whatever. Hopefully at least this was fun to watch. And as always, thank you for watching.